and we are live. Welcome back, Scott Rouse, Greg Hartley, Half the Behavior Panel. How you doing? Great. Good. How are you doing? We always love this show. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, <laughs> we love having you. It's like I, I can't let you get too far away or you, you'll disappear and you won't come back. Um, <laughs> no, we'll be back. Well, yeah, next week, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, this can be. Oh, fun yeah, now. yeah, with Peter Hyatt. Yeah, yep. that'll be great. That'll be good. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And like tonight, though, I, I'm kind of wanting to go a little looser with everything. Like, um, chat, please start putting some questions out there. I can't get to all of them, but I really want to do a good job of hopefully getting some of the questions in from people. And let's branch out a little bit and not just talk about uh, body language, even though I have one video I want to show you, very, you know, one minute video, um, but a little interrogation. And then we have somebody joining us later who you guys will be baselining and questioning as well. Perfect. Yeah. And that's great. a sequel to the show. So it, it's just kind of a free for all fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to start out actually because things go off the rail and it's like, oh, how do I fit it in? I'm going to start out the gate with the um, one video. And uh, this individual is John Pierce. He is he was the lawyer for Kyle Rittenhouse. And he is no longer the lawyer for Kyle Rittenhouse. I, I can get more details later, but that's just uh, that's a very, very thumbnail sketch of of him. But um, he is been accused of let's just say lying and maybe taking the money that has been donated to Kyle Rittenhouse or or, or, or money mismanagement. So this is what the question is about and he's being confronted with. Um, this is from Tim Pool. So this is Tim Pool's sidekick. And then you'll see Tim Pool ask the question and then you'll see John Pierce. So like <laughs> if you're going, wow, yeah, okay, scruffy lawyer, hippie, <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, all I like right. Tim Pool. He's cool. All right, excellent. So, um, Tipple's all right. He, he, he repeats himself a lot, though. So, hmm. but then he does the same thing every day. It's kind of hard not to. All right, here we go. So we, we we've got a, we've got a pretty tough question for you yeah. before before we sign off. I, um, I, I was surprised there wasn't one yet. But. Oh no, there's a bunch of them. But I'm just <laughs> you're being very diplomatic. He's curating them. Through them. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one, of course, pertaining to Kyle Rittenhouse, and uh, uh, I. A lot of people want to know. They say that you've been accused of taking money from Kyle Rittenhouse, and they'd like to know if you have a response. Uh, so, so that's completely untrue. Um, you know, and I'm just going to leave it at that because you know there could be pending litigation about that. But that's completely a thousand percent untrue. Would never do such a thing. And I wish nothing but the best for Kyle. And he's completely innocent. And he needs to be uh, acquitted. I do want to say one thing to a lot of people too that you need to understand. And I'll and I'll throw a reference. And that's it. <laughs> so I, I'll I know hop in guys, immediately. I, yeah, I'll hop in immediately. For me, if I don't know the guy's speech patterns, I have to go watch him and see. Does he always say a thousand percent? We always uh, that, that's a red flag. When somebody says a thousand percent, a billion, <laughs> that's a red flag. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. And when he starts talking, when he, once he asks the question, you see him backing up a little bit, gets that shoulder going a little bit. And then he starts what, what, we, what we call fading facts. He starts talking as that uh, voice. Goes. And the longer he talks, the quieter he gets, the longer it goes. I don't know anything about this. I don't know who that guy is. I know who Tim Pool is, but I, I but I would say, hey man, if I had Tim Pool to say, I'd say, man, bet bet fifty bucks, bet a hundred bucks <laughs> that he's not telling the truth. That's where I'd say to put your money. <laughs> and I, I, that's just right. I, I've never seen either one. I've never seen that guy before in my Me life. Either. Me either. That's where my <laughs> money is. Yeah. <laughs> On that little piece I, of information. Yeah. Well, I, I understand. It. I, I I looked at it, <laughs> so I started laughing. I'm like. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, they mean, start every tick, those. every tell, everything you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've got a buddy who has Tourette's, and he might not tick that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody's saying a thousand percent untrue. Yeah. That. that to everybody. <laughs> That's or, a red flag. What, yeah. For anything. What does that guy do? He's, he's attorney, okay. He he was the lawyer. He was fired from Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. And and this is where I'm going to um, say that I'm going to lean towards him not being truthful because somebody yeah, said, no. why does Barnes hate you so much? And he goes, I don't know. Don't even know the guy. Barnes is written house as lawyer. Now Barnes ah. is suing the guy. Barnes is sending letters every day. It's like, oh, oh never heard of him. I, wow, man. I guess your staff's not checking their mail. 
guess you're not <laughs> noticing this big big media presence blasting you his all over the probably, place. His brain's probably trying to block it out since it's Barnes. <laughs> you know. I yeah, I I do not I would never I'm glad I get along with Barnes. I never would want him on my other uh, on my yeah, enemy. For list. sure. For sure. But, yeah. <laughs> I just had to share that with you because I think Barnes is out of Fun. it too. Yeah. He, he woo. Yeah. All right. For you, well, actually, never say a thousand percent. Never. <laughs> it's a red flag. Well, you know what? I don't like a thousand percent anyway. I don't like a hundred and ten. Yeah. You know, there's a hundred percent or there's some percentage of it. If you know, stay away like, from the word absolutely. Try to do that. that. And yeah, that that's becoming I a standard word for gotten. a lot of people, but yeah, you just got to be careful with it. Yep. What was it? Um, my trip up word used to be actually. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, and I always have a word. I don't know what my current one is, Everybody but I always is. get some yeah. freaking word. And then I hear it. I get nagged about it. And then I start to trip up on it. So I got to find another word. You know how you break that in interrogators when I used to teach interrogation? You sit across okay. the table and every time they say it, you say it. It, it goes away pretty quickly. <laughs> I guess so. Ouch. Somebody said Chase says absolutely a lot. Oh man! Oh, here, uh, uh, chat's uh, busting our balls here. Hundred hey, million. I'll, I'll answer one 100%. of those if you want. Beth yeah, Lenz. Sure. Beth asks Who, where? Scott. Besides going to jail, what is the big deal about teaching the average Joe resistance to interrogation? Scott's not the guy. It's me. Yeah, uh, number be Greg. One, yeah, number one. I you, you could go to jail. Probably not. But it would compromise all the effort we put into our soldiers if they get captured. Because if everybody knew what they're taught, then it would get out pretty quickly and go so that other people could take advantage of it. That's the only reason. A lot of it is out there though, isn't it? Mm, some of it, some of it. I can yeah. tell you that there's plenty of it that isn't. Yeah. But the school, the actual Sears school, there was a CNN special in it years ago. So you get to see our lovely little house there, but yeah, it, the actual techniques, no, they didn't cover it. Somebody's burning chase for being tan daddy. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I believe it. I'm not. Oh, here we go. Chase, AKA tan daddy. I'm not, I, I don't know where you picked that question out of because I'm like looking at it going, didn't even see it. Okay. Well, we're on it um, with the whole absolutely thousand percent. What are some other examples of that? I, what, and what do you call that? Is that, it's not chaff, is it? Or when you, when you say absolutely what's happening is, and some people say, well, I say absolutely all the time and I'm, I'm not, well, you can say absolutely. It depends on the context in which you use it. Right. If I said, if I said, Greg, did you did you run over the dog in the driveway? And you said absolutely not. Why would he say absolutely not? He said no, it wasn't me. Unless you, know, you always you're asked, didn't. It? Yeah. Oh yeah. Then if you say you're always absolutely, then you have to take that out. That's why we we have baselining, and you, and you have to understand where that person is coming from. Why you can't tell. Like a second ago, when we looked at that guy. That was, a, that was like four four to nine red flags in the first seven seconds. But when you don't know someone, you don't you can't just look at one thing and say, hey, they're lying or tell the truth. That's why it's it's <laughs> sort of with that guy because we, we we don't know you know probably got a pretty good idea but we can't tell you for sure now now you to take it back though if you have a child you're absolutely absolutely gonna say can i uh, borrow the car absolutely not yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's <laughs> yeah it's defining it's different when you use it that way and most of the time that it it keys scott's red flag is when these people are in talking and they never say absolutely until you say did you murder and they go absolutely not that's a weird kind of a use of it. And we see it a lot. You just see it in, in, in interrogation. The, the interesting piece, guys, is people in interrogation are just amplified versions of what they are here. I've spent more of my life out of the interrogation room than in officially these days. And I see people in corporate America every day doing the same kind of things. You know? Okay. Um, cool. Got some questions coming in here. Um can you tell us how you discern between intuition and projection? And I think this was a damn good question. It's a great question. So, so for me, when I think about intuition, you know, fear, that whole gift of fear thing, all of those, all those concepts, some of it is, is tied to projection, of course. Hi, Scott's mom. Some of it can be projection. You got to be careful. But I, all I think that intuition is, is the ability to take a frame of reference and apply it to something you're seeing. That's all I think it is. Now, nobody really can tell me I'm right or wrong. We've never proven it. But if I see something enough times 
and then I see a, another situation, I can overlay it. I think that's intuition in itself. And having the ability to tie all those different things together fairly rapidly means that you can do that. What you got to ask yourself, though, is, is it just that I feel like that person's not trustworthy or is there some reason? So I, I'm mm -hmm. always careful about I, I'm pretty intuitive as a guy, but not compared to any woman. And I always say my mm -hmm. first gut, I go back and look and try to figure out why did I think that? And you should do the same. Is Got that it. helpful? Greg nailed it. I can't okay, add anything well, to that. I just be repeating what he said. Pretty well, much. I guess my other one would be um, a, another angle with the same question. How do you discern that you're actually intuiting something and that you're not projecting your own feelings, thoughts, and um, prejudices on that other person? I, I, I'm wondering, it could be written in that way. You know, it's like, know yourself, oh, know yourself. Know yourself is the first thing, right? If you don't know yourself, and a lot of people don't, I, one of the hardest things in life for people is to align all of your views. You know, having an, un, an underlying thing that causes you to wake up in the morning or causes you to put how you string the world together is important. If every time you come up with something is because you saw it last on the internet, you probably are going to be projecting because you're just constantly getting new input. You don't have an, a foundation that everything ties through together. And that, not to say there's anything wrong with that. That's the way you want to live. But knowing yourself is the only way to have any idea about that you're projecting. Yeah, and when you're dealing with intuition, you're talking about it's your brain that gives you that. That's the intuition part of it. That's why women are so good at it because their brains receive and catch and and sort information much quicker than than guys brains do so the intuition part of it is that feeling you get your gut feeling and what gives you that gut feeling is, is this little thing in the back of your head at the base of the at the brain stem called the locus ceruleus and what gathers the, the information up to give it that is this thing called the fusiform gyrus and i'm always talking about the fusiform gyrus it collects all the little things and movements and sounds and and things going on right in front of you all the small things it collects all those and it throws them back there then you've got the mid temporal gyrus that collects all the big movements. We see somebody, some plane fly by, a duck walking around, somebody moving the big moves, big shoulder moves, big body moves. And it collects all that information and throws it back there to the locus ceruleus. Then it starts, in other words, it goes through and says, Have I seen this before? What's happened with this before? Why does this look weird to me? This way, this does look weird to me. Here's what's happening. This isn't right. Then it throws it on back to another part of the brain. And that's where you get that feeling in your quote unquote gut. And then women's intuition, where you say, Something's not right here. And I don't know what it is. It's just something. Yeah, we've all walked into a room and gone, Something's not right here. Or they felt the vibe in the room of, you know, when, when the, the vibe was weird. That's what's going on. Your brain sees that and, and says, What's what? Why, why does this look familiar? And I know it's not good. So that's that's what that's about. That's what the intuition part of it is about. So you've got to be able to differentiate those because if you don't, you're gonna be making bad decisions right and left once you say, once you do that. That's why it's always good to have if you're doing an interrogation where it's something really important. Have a, have a have a Greg will tell you this too. Have a woman in, interrogator watch what's going on. And don't say, hey, watch what's going on. See if I miss anything. Just have them watch it. Then partners take a break. Go ahead. So, yeah. You, would you say anything I'm not saying? Yeah. What about you? Didn't When you ask him this, here's what happened. Or mm -hmm. this may happen. I don't know why I think that. I'm just asking that. And see what I, so you'll get those kind of answers. Not like somebody who's studying it to see something that you may have missed. Because that, that'll mess it up. Just what are you seeing naturally? What's, what's coming in without a focus really on it? Makes sense. Um, question from Nate, the lawyer. Good lawyer question. Have you ever had uh, someone oh, confess who was innocent? Have I ever seen it or have I ever had it happen? Yeah, sure. You can make anyone confess. I'll say this. You know, I, I worked in the best stress laboratory on earth. And I will tell you that in that place, if I'd wanted to make someone confess to something in three days, I could because we had absolute control over their bodies and their food and everything else. Now, that was American soldiers learning to resist interrogation. We saw stress on a level you'd never see it. And what we know is that you can make anyone confess to anything in three days if you have absolute control. That's why get a lawyer is what I always tell people. If you get arrested, <laughs> get a good lawyer. Don't let, don't talk to, a, don't talk to us. Talk to no, a lawyer. Shut, first off, shut up. Yeah, exactly. Think if you go lawyer. talk, talk to a lawyer, <laughs> say get a lawyer. But yeah, guys, I, I, I've gone out of my way in my entire life to try not to get the wrong information. And remember, a lot of what I did was intelligence interrogation. Confessions may be part of that, like, bad guy stuff when you're dealing with terrorists. But most of the time I'm after actionable intelligence. Where are the bases? Where are these things? Where are those things? So we can go get them. More important than having the guy say, I did it. Well, okay, you did it with who and where are they now? That's what I would care about more. So that's how. Yeah, I definitely want, I definitely want to talk about that later. Um, 
this is a good one. Uh, Tina Smith is saying, speaking of women, I'm talking to intuition. Let's hear your votes for the uh, your favorite behavior women with public platforms. So, and that's a good one. I I try to recruit guests on, and I like to get women on too because you know they're not necessarily out there completely. So, who would you guys recommend that you might have crossed? Obviously, Lena Cisco, I'm sure, comes to mind. Um, sure, I've known Lena for a long time. I've, I've known Janine. I've worked with Janine over time. I like Janine. Get along with her great too. I don't know everybody. You know, I, I've kind of learned in the military side. Scott, you probably know as many of these folks as I do, or more. And you can look at the top ten guys. The, those folks have been around a long time, and they've proven and proven and proven that they're competent at what they're doing. Now, that's not saying they're not some brand new ones. As I said to Scott the other day, the world's changing in body language. So it, as long as they're you know, have, they're not, when you scratch your nose, it means you're lying. They're, they're yeah. didn't listen to them. Well, yeah. that, that, that's when I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and we got, a uh, uh, Tracy, um, Brown as well. I think. I yeah. Think uh, yeah. I worked you. with Patty Wood before I've done Patty Wood is a lot of academic background. I worked with her on TV a couple of times. So there, there are a bunch of folks out there. There Tracy. There's a bunch of others. You, just Tanya, guys, Tanya yeah, Ryman. Oh yeah, Ta oh, yeah. God, Tanya. Please forgive me. I didn't yeah. bring you up because Tanya and I go way, way back. She endorsed a, a book for me a long, long time ago. We worked together on a lot of things. So, yep. All right. Uh, Laura wants to know how can I tell me when my twelve-year-old is lying to me? <laughs> well, it depends. Is the answer? <laughs> There's no simple answer, right? Baselining. You know your kid better than anybody. The other way is how do you? What do you look like when you're lying? because your kid learned from you and they're probably doing exactly Ooh. what you did. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Will you um, address the difference in formal analysis by female and male behavior specialist? Scott, you want to take that one? Yeah. I, <laughs> what does that mean? I'll chime in. That means Greg's ducking. No, chime in, Greg. I, I, no, I'll not, chime I mean, in. I got no problem with this because guys, where I learned in body language and interrogation, I worked right alongside men and women the same. Anytime we're talking about men and women, we're talking about a bell curve. People behave certain ways. So we're going to talk in generalizations. We just have to. That's where it is. And what I typically say is in the evolution of our species, in the way that women's brains evolved, they were very much more attentive to detail than we are because males are designed to plan and go kill something. And if you mess up and you get killed, you mess up and you get killed. And there's a lot more of you around than you need to start with. But women had to pay close attention to whether the blueberry with the red spot was safe or the red berry with the blue spot. And I think, this is my opinion, I think their brains as a result are much better connected. And we know, for example, that a, a physical fact is that corpus callosum that connects the right and left side of the brain is much more neurally dense than it is in men. And it's why often, you know, my opinion, it's why often we think women are emotional when they're arguing and they're actually just flexing back and forth between brain sides so quickly we can't keep up because we're Luddites and we're like clunk, clunk. Oh, they clunk. stomp us in the brain area. Yeah. Have you talked with um, evolutionary psychologists at all? Because I feel like there might be some crossover um, Red in line, that. Have it, and, have it, and yeah. questions. Yeah. Grab one. Yeah, I'd love to talk to him. Yeah. I should recruit. Yeah. yeah, I might I might be able to come up with the, with one. No, I'm just, I was just, I love crossing over different disciplines and yeah. I would think that, you run you know, into religion at that point. You, you you start button heads with a religion. Yeah, so it's 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 odd to get into that world. Like I always say, Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. So that's that's <laughs> where I'm coming from. And there's the same time I, Yeah. So <laughs> I want so I want to have I want to come from a place where it's where everything neurologically and clinically and um, from a scientific point of view is correct. So it's it's sometimes you'll you'll butt heads with with in, with one world and the other world so you have to sometimes you can say i don't know uh, you know you could say um if you see a big shadow come over you were you were once a lizard and it came over i'm not saying that there that evolution didn't happen hear me out but you know a big shadow came over you and that's why you know when something bad well why didn't big guns why didn't he say you know what i'm gonna make it so there could be a, when a shadow comes over you there's be some clues clue you, clue you know what's gonna happen so you'll see these dangerous signs. i mean when you think about it it, it it could go both ways so when when that argument starts but i i, I lean toward the uh religious well, my, my of, evolution you know. is not going to millions and millions. I don't care if if you are not good at picking out which berry you eat. You just don't reproduce. That's the kind of evolution I yeah. mean. Right. I right. believe there were dinosaurs and all that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not one. I'm not like a, like a hardcore. There were no Scott, dinosaurs. And God put the bones there to fool us. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about from the you know his historic you know from 
uh, science and religion when they meet. Sure. And it gets ugly sometimes. So yeah, people get angry. Over it's those it's a tough, sure. tough spot. Even, yeah. even within your fields or whatever, because I kind of roll them together. Like you're the behavior panel. You're not the body language panel. For one, right. so you're already kind of branching over and bleeding over into statement analysis and uh, interrogation and other things. Uh, you have people like Albert Ray, who is very skeptical, and I've actually had him on. He yep. doesn't um, believe in a lot of this, and he is very scientific. He runs lab experiments kind of disproving. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I will tell you that interrogation or getting information, guys, every time I say interrogation, let me tell you, there's no pretty word for that in any language. In Arabic, it's an ugly word. Everybody thinks horror when they hear interrogator. So there's no easy way to say it. I should, we should change it and rebrand it. But if you're an interrogator, body language and behavior, body language is about that much of what you do. It's just, hey, look, there's something going on. Why is he doing that? Or why is she doing mm -hmm. that? Then we go into we've already worked up who you are. I mean, we come in with a pretty good picture of where you were captured, who you were with, what you had done, your phone records, all that. So we got a pretty good feel for who you are. And then we come in with some psychological ploys and we use a handful of tricks. We use things like elicitation where we might whisper something to you and make you think that we're giving you something that's valuable. And then you bleed information and we take it. And so most of the interrogation, most of the information gathering we're doing is a combination of known assumptions about who you are, probing until you con confide in us or let us know something, then we use a tool to open you up. And I always equate it to, you're kind of like a pearl, but somewhere inside that pearl, there was a fracture that you don't know is there and we're looking for that fracture. That's- You also do a little persuasion too, right? Yeah. A little influence, oh, right. yeah. some Cialdini yeah. work is in there. I mean, you got to set up the environment in a manner That's that right. is going to make people feel like confessing, be it friendliness or otherwise and yep. the elicitation that's something that you know lately that's become kind of a hot term in, in our circles uh, lena's talking about it and all that yeah she worked for john how that's can, why yeah <laughs> well how can you um how can you teach elicitation and this is something i genuinely am struggling with without it being feeling sleazy it and i know this sleazy. sounds yeah, it, it does feel it, sleazy it, <laughs> what do you think about it's like well if you say it like this they're gonna feel and it's like every, we're pulling levers every part of it yeah. really feels like you're pulling somebody's lever and i'm like okay there's got to be another way to do this that will have a positive effect and not necessarily be i am manipulating you because that it is a full-on manipulation well at the end of the day, everything we're talking about, all this body language and behavior and all this stuff is around, you go get me back to it. Here's Maslow again. And all we're doing is managing <laughs> your drives. And, and there's positive ways to do it. I, I wrote a book called Get People to Do What You Want. My publisher wanted me to write a book on manipulation. And I refused to make it as dark as I could. I made it more about light and how do you make people's careers better? How do you, you know, make a person feel better about something? But all these things prey on that need to belong and the need to differentiate or establish esteem. That's all these things do, every tool we're using. So if you're the kind of guy who wants to go and manipulate people for your own gain and no other reason, you, it, it is dark. But yeah, it, there's also positive use of it too. Scott, you're so quiet. Oh, I'm, no, I'm down here. I've got an iPad down here. I'm reading, these, reading the questions these people are asked. There's a whole thing going on down there I wasn't aware of. I was These people are fussing yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, everything down there. I'll, you I'll know, throw going back and forth. Do you believe there's some truth to mental telepathy? I do. I do. Because, because uh, I can be thinking about my mom and she'll call. Or if one of us gets sick, my brother or sister, she goes, I, 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 I don't, you know, I wonder how Mitch is doing or Ellen's doing. I got to give him a call. That, as far as that goes, I'm not saying I can, I can tell you what number and all that stuff, but I think a connection between a mother and a child or somebody you're, that you're, have blood with. I don't think you can tell them what number they're thinking of. I don't think you can tell them what color they're thinking of, those types of things. But I'm saying you'll get a feeling something's not right. You always hear that thing about twins. When they say, I don't, you know, I smashed my finger and his finger hurt. Not like that kind of thing. But, you know, one will be really bummed out and the other one will go, you know, call him from across the, you know, the United States and go, what's going on? Why do you feel weird? So, so that kind of thing, I do, I do feel like there's a little, there's a little something there. How deep it goes, I have no earthly idea because I'm, I, I've never seen anybody, um, you know, guess my card that wasn't a magician. That kind of thing. Well, twin studies are 
if you look at some of the twin studies, those can be just downright spooky. Yeah. You know, the twins separated yeah. at bo- sure. birth that were adopted by two different families and they wound up, you know, and they They're married both firemen uh, with a red a truck and a, yeah. yeah, and with the same wife, both named Becky and Dudded <laughs> and two exact number of kids and the kids are the names. Some of that does get weird and they, they're dressing the same. Now, it could be a cultural thing that they wind up getting picked up at the same culture. I don't know. Um, serious note, do you guys ever use um, proper tools like um, this in interrogation? <laughs> yeah, that, that you know the whole story. A, a guy I know who's an interrogator, that the, the story Lena told you about the guy who used it in Mogadishu. Yeah, used the Game Boy. That's a beautiful thing. You know, I've used the body language. I've used body language and said, look, I can tell when you're lying. I did it on History Channel. Um, there's a woman, brilliant woman, but I went in and said, look, I could tell when you're lying because I've been watching her long enough and I've, I've baselined her eye movement and everything else. And I said, she said, well, I think that's smoke and mirrors or something like that. And I said, okay, well, let's try it. And I'd ask her a question when she told me a lie. I said, and that's a lie. And that's a lie. That's true. That's true. That's a lie. And apparently I was right enough that she said, okay, I'll just tell you what I did. And they had a they had a story they were supposed to hide. The, there were nine Americans who went out did this thing, and then we captured them. We had to break the story within twenty four hours. It took twelve. So, it was kind oh, of I a believe survivor it. show. Believe it. Yeah. When um, that same story or something very similar was used both in uh, the TV show Homicide and in The Wire, and yeah. their variation was uh, they used a copy machine. Yeah, yeah, which was pretty freaking funny. You know, a sheet of paper, and they just go and hit the button, and it spits out lie. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. Well, I saw the pictures from the guy who did it in Mogadishu, and it's it was pretty pretty funny. It, it is. It's funny. You said this is actually a good um, morality question. You see, I want to mix it up with these things, but I mean, do you guys ever worry that you're training someone who's a bad person, like a bad cop? Yeah, yeah. You have to. There's no way you can weed all that out because you're no. you're training groups. And you're not talking to each one of them and any group's going to have uh when you're dealing with let's let's get into psychopaths when you're dealing with psychopaths you've got they want to be in positions of power so anything from the doorman up to you know the the person in charge of whatever it is cop preacher priest whatever it is they want to be the person in charge so there's going to be one or two of them or that personality type in there where they're psychopaths i don't know but you'll have the covert narcissist or the malignant narcissist in there a covert narcissist hiding their narcissism from others that will be in there wanting those positions of power. So, and with some of the military folks that we deal with, yeah, you're going to have, you're going to have a little bit of that in there. So yeah, well, it, if, it's, there's no way to get around it. Hare says 1% of the population, if 1% of the population is psychopath, then you got to, you know, if you're going to reach millions or hundreds of thousands of people, you're going to touch people. And it, it, I mean, it's it, probably it, people who are drawn to the story or cops. But it's going to be a higher percentage of military cops just because that's going to attract them. Right. Or at least it'll try. Um, well, then they have to sort through. Yeah. Do yeah. If you, if you do, I mean, I, I imagine that you, especially Scott, because he's got a thing for psychopaths when you're picking up on it and you're like, let's say in a group class or something, do you just kind of nudge one of the buddies and just go, Hey, tell me about your buddy. No, there. there's, no, because there's there there's that relationship isn't happening there. It's a group, you know. It's a, and you and you'll ask questions and you'll talk to some guys before and some guys after. But there's no way to get in there and to meet everybody and talk to them and get a. Re- there's just no way. Some guys you'll you'll talk to after they want to talk about what was that book? Tell me about that book. Um, but you usually you, you, there's just it's just talking. It's like going and giving a talk yeah. somewhere almost. You know, you don't yeah. really you don't get enough time with each person to be able to tell something like that. And if you did. You'd be crazy because you can't tell in that short amount of time. You there's yeah. there's it's impossible. No matter what they're doing or what they're or what's happening, you can't nail one in th- that quickly. Sometimes it takes six months or a year to be able to diagnose one properly. So now, you Greg, can get cues and say this might be what's happening, but do what? No, I was laughing at yeah. the old drill sergeant oh. comment. Oh, 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 oh. which one? Like drill I was going to yeah. say, Greg, um, with your uh, military background and all the people. Who are um uh, here? <laughs> I I don't think you have feelings to hurt, Doctor Wood. Um, anyway. 
Oh no, cops aren't psychopaths. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, don't start that. No, I, I, don't start that with me because I'll I'll come I on. Said there's a higher no, percentage of them trying to become cops yeah, and drawn drawn to oh, it. Yeah, and, and yeah. they don't get yeah, it. Yeah. Drama yeah, so don't them. mistake what I'm saying because I will fight you with that one. Believe me, I'm loaded for bear on that. So is he being mean? I can't tell. Is he joking? <laughs> no, you see, he's being a cheeky bastard. He, he, oh, I know no. him. He, he, oh, okay, your buddy. Okay, I don't want somebody he, to take what I'm saying and go. This guy says they're like cops or psychopaths. No, 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 it's no. not what I'm saying. He, he just likes to debate and have fun. No, Greg, um, you, I'm guessing, have potentially run across them within your command or people you might have. Uh, been yeah, just remember about. when you're in ops. When you're in ops, you don't happen to fall into ops. You, it, it's a hell of a process for those guys to get there. So mm. now you might have some guys in the task force, you know, helicopter guys and that kind of thing who make it, who are petrol guys and that kind of, but for a guy to get through selection and assessment, he gets psyche valved. They go through the whole process. They do MMPI, all that stuff. So for them to make it that far is usually pretty tough. I, I, I you know, I count among the toughest, toughest things that I've ever seen, people go through is that process to get there. And then, you know, there's another tier if you go to Delta or one of those, but yeah, no, it, it's really hard for them to make it through the weeding process. But some do like not, Russell Williams. Not saying they don't. Right. Yeah. Because some people are good at hiding, but remember you can be a psychopath, but you got to be a damn strong psychopath to get through all that. <laughs> and so if you're lazy to go with it, you're not going to make it. And if you are easy to break, you're not going to make it. So yeah, there's a lot of other filters there. Had to get that up for Scott. Well, guess what? We have a guest with us. Hey, Rich. man. Hey, hey, Rich. Oh, we, oh, and he is muted. We can't muted. There we go. How we doing, we guys? Are. We're doing good. great. How you Love doing? your room. Yeah. 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 The uh, mic was off for a second. Did I do that seamlessly or was it noticeable? <laughs> no, well, we, uh, we, we do it to each other all the time. So you're. Yeah. Well, no, what's funny is they mess with each other. If you guys ever check out the show, they especially try to get Chase. So Chase will start talking muted, and, <laughs> and then Mark is the worst about it because Mark will go, hmm. Yeah. They got me yesterday. So you're... <laughs> on the screen. Yeah, you just popped <laughs> on. Not, not. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I, I just popped out. I heard you. It was really quick. You got me. I was <laughs> I, I was over there reading something on locals and I heard it and I'm like, ah. Oh. That's all right. Oh, I see how it is. He, he doesn't pay attention. He's going to be a star. No, <laughs> oh, I can't all stop. Right. Yeah. Um, we want to you know, put you guys together. I'm going to just kind of sit back and enjoy the show. I, you know, I have zero preparation. I, I've done no preparation for the show at all. Just kind of hanging out, having fun. So take it away, Scott and Greg. Yeah, so Rich, I'll I'll start, and I'll just tell you if you if I annoy you, just say leave me alone. That'll be okay. <laughs> but all um, right, sounds good. So so I heard you're in Gainesville. Tell me where in Gainesville exactly you were. Roughly, I mean, where did you live? Yeah, I lived on uh, the northwest side of Gainesville, and 39th Avenue is pretty main street there. We lived in a subdivision that's off of 39th, but it's pretty big. So 39th goes across 13th Street, which is where that restaurant is, the intersection of 13th uh, and 39th. Which, which, which restaurant? Uh, it was a Japanese restaurant, and I, it was it has a very generic name. Something like, uh, literally, like, well, what do they call uh, Japanese when they do the show for you? It's um, hibachi. Hibachi. Okay. Something okay. hibachi. Okay. Yeah, and, and how long were you at that hibachi grill? Maybe... An hour and a half. Do you remember what you had to eat? I actually I do. I had uh, the, this is going to make me sound like a snob, uh, but I had the uh, the mix, of, which is a filet mignon and a shrimp. No, it didn't sound like a snob to me. It sounds like food. So, yeah. do you have any yeah, drinks yeah. when you're there? It's my usual. Okay. Yeah. Do you have drinks? What'd you have? Yeah, a Pepsi. Okay. Because um, you're driving. And, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm driving. You're, you're, yeah, I do yeah. like sake. <laughs> It's well okay. known, but not when I have the two kids in the car. So, so what kind of car were you driving? 2006 Jeep Liberty. Do you still have that car? I do. I'll never and get rid of her. I just, so, I, yeah, because it's memorable, huh? Yeah, and so, I, ju I just changed the control arms in it and everything. I love her. She's, she's no, great. I, I have another one, but I love I her. Like you, I like you already if you're a car guy. So, um, Is that the one with the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. Go yeah, ahead, so Jay. the last question. So you had that car that long. Where's the tear in the seat? 
<laughs> where's the tear? It's yeah, in, in the, the front, seat. in the front driver's side where you put your keys on your belt if you're being uh, not careful and you sit down on the leather and tear it. Okay. I figured you had one. So it's, it's definitely there. With now this is what, it's, what year was it? 2006. Is it? And is that the count that has the key for the glove compartment? Uh, I don't think if it does, I've never used it. No, I don't is think it, there is a key on it. No. So it's the, no. is it the kind you push in and it comes out or you flip it up? Yeah, or you flip it, work? flip it. Yeah, you flip it. Yeah. yeah. And so the thing on the side, do you, how do you, how do you open that, the little thing to your side there? What is that called? The, you know what I'm saying? Where you put all your stuff in the, when you're driving along, you're right oh, on the center console. Down. Yeah. You yeah. squeeze the, the center console is also a flip, but instead of flipping it where you got to kind of cup it like the, um, yeah. the glove compartment, you have to, you have to grab it and kind of pull up on it and then it pulls up. Is it is it the same color in there that is the the inside of the car? Well, it's supposed to be. They're trying. So the interior is gray. <laughs> it's a gray leather, but the exterior was the uh, chrome package for that year. So it's silver with the chrome trim. Uh, so they, I mean, if you're trying to match it, I guess you could say yeah. it's close. Yeah. So when you were driving, and your wife was over to the right, and she was looking out the window, what kind of expression was she making? You were talking about. You know, at first, conf confused. I would think I would, I would, I would describe it as confused at first. You know, like so uh, if she, so if she's, did she look at you with that face, or is she looking out? How 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 could you tell she had that confused look? Yeah, on her she face? had her head. Look, she's, she's looking. Yes, yeah, so you, if you're driving and you have someone in the passenger seat, she's looking off out out of the window, trying to see whether or not she can look out of the driver's side window or the or the windshield better to look at it. So she's kind of crook, you know, tilting her head crooked to look out there and she's got this, you know, weird, confused look on her face. And when I noticed her, she did look over and go to speak and say something like, am I seeing what I, what I think I'm seeing? But I already she, saw it because I noticed her looking. Than you. She's two Is years she younger than you. She's, she's two a years year, younger than you. A year, one. Just one almost year? To the, almost to the month. Okay. All right. So your kids were with you? Tell me what was going on with the kids at the time. Well, I, I mean, at the time, in the beginning, they didn't know what was going on until I went. I mean, we started talking aloud, so then they started to get it. But they didn't really, in the back seat, they really didn't have the unobstructed view uh, that we had. But once I pulled in, we were talking about it out loud. Then they did know what was happening, but they did see it. Both of them did get a chance to see it. My son thought it was great. Uh, my daughter, not so much. She was actually kind of terrified. Uh, and I scared her even more because I wanted to get out and look, uh, which you didn't how, like. how, how long before your children started looking at it after, you know, you saw it, then how did you, did you say, look, or what, how did you let them know that was happening? Well, I cut, I cut the, I cut the wheel hard. I cut this guy off to get in because as you're coming up 39th Avenue, it was over this subdivision. It doesn't have a sign, but it's called Hazel Heights. And we used to live in there years ago, years before. And I knew, so I know the area. I cut the guy off and I knew that was basically my last chance to get into that subdivision. There are a couple, two right-hand turns into that subdivision, but there are only, two, there are more than that, but there are only two that connect. Did so he see this I too? Through the streets. Did he see this too? My son? You know, the guy, the guy you driving. Off. The guy driving. Yeah, you know, I don't know if he did or not. I, I honestly, he, I mean, it all happened so quick. Or, or did he roll down the window he or anything? Did. He didn't actually, I, he, you know, he, he didn't. And it was so quick when I went around him, uh, that term was right there. I, there really wasn't enough time for me to really check his reaction. I, you know, um, I got in front of him and then I made that right. I got, you know, that's, that's one of the things I, I don't know how p other people could not have seen it. I just don't. So when you turned into this place, how far did you have to go before you got to the, the, whatever you saw? Not long, about two turns. Uh, okay, when right you're turning, turn, when you quick. say two turns, you know the neighborhood. So, what did you do? Have, give, give me a def, describe what you yeah. did when you went in the neighborhood. So that when that when I made that first right, that's into it, and then another right that comes to a stop sign. I knew there was a stop sign there, but also there's an open area. There's a lot of trees in Gainesville. They worship the tree in Gainesville. I'm not even kidding. It's it's a it's a, it's a sad day when they cut any of these things down. So there was a lot of canopy, and I wanted to get to that open area where I could I could see better. When we were on 39th, I could see it above the canopy. But once I turn in, you have the trees kind of engulf, you know, obstruct your view. 
So when I made that turn onto the stop sign, I know that's an open area. And I knew I would be pretty close to it at that point. And I was. Have you seen anything like this ever before? N no, no, nothing like this. This is Does it look uh, like anything you've seen on TV or. No, you know, I mean, nothing, you know, I've seen stealth bombers before, uh, different things. This was not plane like. So a stealth bomber, which everyone always brings to me, oh, it could have been a stealth. It's triangular. This was a triangle, a triangle. And in trying to, you know, got some good feedback, got some bad feedback from this interview. And one of them, uh, even people offering explanations, one of them was this thing called the TR3B. And I even found that myself when I was looking for an explanation of what this could be. I mean, close, but not it. If I had to say it resembled something that I've seen before, it's that. But I only saw that if it's real. We don't even know if it really when you, exists. When your wife describes it, what does she describe about it that, that is different than what you described that you correct her on anything? No, not really. Um, you know, when I got off the interview yesterday, uh, she was trying to say, you know, you could have said this a little bit differently to, to describe the layering of that. She has better vision than me too. So that there, there definitely is that that's, I mean, that that's, she doesn't wear glasses like I wear glasses and I had my glasses on, uh, but she had a couple better ways to describe that layering. But generally, I mean, it's, it, it was so obvious right there. I mean, it's right there. So it's, so how it's big was, how, how big was this thing? You know, big, it's about, I'm estimating it's about 500 to a thousand feet in the air tops. So if I'm tr taking that into con consideration, you know, bigger than a football field that it was huge, huge. That the size is one of the reasons why I can't wrap my, my mind around that. We, we could have created this thing, you know, so I don't know what it was because I, you know, I didn't knock on the door and shake the hand of whoever was piloting the thing. So I can't say for certain what it is, but I do lean to, you know, my own personal view is that I lean toward this didn't, we didn't make this. It's too, it's so big. I've seen aircraft carriers before. And I think Eric even brought that up yesterday. We can build some pretty massive machines, but not massive like that. And they fly. I've never seen them. If, the, if we, if we have, and then somebody wants to point one out to me and explain it, then great. Um, all yeah, you know, I'm I'm willing to hear it, but uh, this bigger than a football field is the best explanation. So when you say it was triangular, <clears throat> what do you mean by triangular? It was flat triangle, four sided triangle, yeah. or three sided triangle? Like yeah, it was a three three sided. I would say uh, equal sides, just about equal sides. Maybe the back was a little bit shorter. Um, you know, shorter in length. Um, you know, but, but I don't mean triangular. It, it was a triangle. Like a you know, pyramid? Shape. No, because it didn't have height that tapered. Um, it was just like the shape of a triangle. It had height, which gave it, maybe you, know, you could speculate that there are different levels of the thing. Uh, it was high, uh, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't what pyramid. Was height? What was, what was the height? To, to length ratio, what would you say? Yeah, maybe about a sixth, of, maybe an eighth actually is probably better. One eighth, the length of How the How many layers were side. there? That's hard to, honestly, that's hard for me to really say with accuracy. Um, you know, you're not counting when you're looking at it and it's just, there were stacks. They kind of look like plates on top of plates. So after we got off yesterday, uh, she's like, no, nah, they look like if you were to take triangles that maybe had a little bit of height and were that long, right? So the, just to give you an idea, the height versus the length comparison, and you were to stack them on top of each other and lay smaller ones underneath. That's how it looked when it was stacked. So, you know, if I'm, I don't want to just spit a number out, but maybe four on each side, three on each side, three up top, three on the bottom, or four and four. Uh, it looked pretty symmetrical, but it also, uh, but my view of the back of it uh, was was a lot shorter than the side of it. So when we saw it, when we first saw it, we saw it from the broad side of the right side of the craft. And then when I turned into the development, I and I was and I pulled up to that stop sign when it was getting ready to leave. That's when I got a view of or a better view of the back. And that was so quick 
that you know you, your brain struggles to process details. Your it struggles to process what you're looking at, really. Yeah, you know, and, and you're you're doubting whether or not you you're you're seeing, you know, you're hallucinating or not. Seriously, um, but so taking in details like that is a little bit hard. But I would say maybe three or four on each side, you know, from one on uh, so three or four on the top, three or four on the bottom. When it took off, when it took off, was it was it going in a? Could you tell if, if point A is where it took off? And point B is where it disappears. Could you see it anywhere between A and B? I mean, did you see it? Did you see the path? I didn't. Honestly, uh, it was so quick that you, all you could see, you, you see a, a, maybe a blur. It, it was, it moves so fast that you can see it get ready to go forward and do what I tried to describe last night. And then it was a pinpoint in the sky and then gone in a second. And you could see it in that distance so small like a star and then would you gone say would, all would you say it would you say it just went from here to here like was here went away and showed up here could you say that about it um you're seeing it here that it disappears and just shows up here on the way out I'm, and maybe does that again you know i mean i guess it could have i don't understand how it even did that to begin with so you know may, maybe but the only you know the only thing that makes me doubt that it went from a point a to a point b and stop is that from that distant speck in the sky it disappeared as if it you know which gives you gives me the impression that it was a continual motion and it just it was le and it left um so i mean i i guess if and if I knew how the thing worked better, I could answer that with more, you know, be, be okay. more definitive. But it looked like it just it was a, it was a small speck because maybe that's all you really can process with that kind of speed. One minute something's there. You can tell it's getting ready to go. And then it's it's just gone. It just goes. So what do your kids remember about this incident? My son loves it. He 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 remembers it like uh like it, it was something he'll never see again in his life, and he's lucky. My daughter had a lot actually had a lot of problems uh, from it. She she had trouble sleeping. She was terrified that the thing was going to take me. You know, I jumped right out of that jeep, left the door open, and everything, and I'm looking up at this thing like I can't believe what I'm looking at, and she's screaming in the background to my wife. You know, get me and trying to get her to get me back in the car. Um, so afterwards she, she was shaken by it. She was crying did, and I, did, you know, you try not to make light of it, but did you report it? I did. I did. After call? a couple, call? I called MUFON, uh, which stands for mutual UFO network or something like that. But, um, after a day or two of trying to process this and making calls, and, you know, trying to figure out if anybody could explain this thing. I called MUFON because people told me that these guys were serious investigators. They're not, you know, uh, not that anybody's, I, mean, I don't want to call anybody a quack, but these guys don't do this for just a living. Some of them are police officers. Some of them are insurance claims investigators. They have investigative experience and they do things um, legitimately. And they did. And when they came, um, he, they, he's the, the one who was in charge, he, he separated my wife and I, he wanted to hear the story differently from me and her without us being able to collaborate, uh, you know, our stories. And then I asked us to draw it out, uh, you know, basically see if anybody how long after, how long after you saw it, did this happen? Uh, they were quick, uh, maybe about three days. They came out pretty quick. So it was I got a I, I took about a day or two to call because I was processing. Couple of last questions for me. What do you think was inside that thing? I'll tell you, I, I don't know, but I want to. <laughs> I really well, bad. if you were taking a wild guess what you think's inside, what would you say? How it would look based on what you saw outside? Uh, you know, your imagination can go wild. Really, it can. You know, that I I do think I'll I'll say this. I do think something must have been inside because there was a there was a detail that I didn't get into last night, which is when I was looking at the sides where we were talking about different levels, it, it, you could see lights in there. And I don't mean they were lights like projecting lights or aircraft lights. It looked like lights from inside. And that alone, that detail alone makes me think, well, why would there be lighting if no, if there wasn't you know, living form in there of some sort, but also the size of it, I just don't know why you would build an unmanned craft 
that large. Unless maybe, like Eric said last night, you're transporting something. But this looked like it was beautiful. And I don't know how somebody, something, whatever it may be, would build something like that and not appreciate it. It's like building a beautiful stingray and not driving it. It just makes no sense. Um, I, I, I don't I don't think we, it could have been us. So I, I really can't say for certain it's some alien race or something, but I, I'll tell you for certain, I don't believe it was human. I don't believe there were human beings in that thing. I just, we can't do what I saw. We just can't. I wish we could, but we can't. Okay, thanks. I'm good, Greg, if you are. I'm good. Yeah. So you want to know what we think? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. I, I believe you. You're telling me exactly what you remember. You saw exactly that, and you know that that's guys. As far as you can go in any of this with anything that we can't explain is exactly that. And people are going to say your blink rate was up, but your blink rate is always up. I watched you. Your blink rate is higher yeah. than normal naturally. It is. And you slow down. Yeah. You slow down when you got to processing things. I watched that. Uh, there's enough illustrating in that. I'll stop there, Scott. You want to? Yeah. And when you start thinking, you're when you're remembering something. You didn't. This is, if you took what you said last night and compared it to what you just said, it's going to be the same. And I would yep. and I would say it's going to be the same speed, slowing down, same speed, and all those types of things. When we're asking all those odd questions about the inside of your car and all that stuff. We're just seeing how you process um, memories and how you process thinking of something. You didn't take you very long to start processing what you're telling us about because you're excited about it. And the reason that you're talking so much about it is because that's what you do for a living. So some people say, well, he just didn't, yep. he didn't shut up the whole time. He kept talking, talking. That's what you do. So you're, you're used to doing right. that. You're used to driving the situ the, the, the uh, situation. Oops, sorry. And um, being the one in charge of that. So that's what's happened there. You're, you're, you're keeping it rolling. So I, th everything you said is the very same. I didn't see one. The only thing that bothered me was that part about your wife last night where she was looking out the window, but you hadn't told me about how she was looking up in the front of the window. That that was different there. That's why at the first I was kind of, okay, here we go. I uh, must have missed it. But that's that's that was the only thing. But you you cleaned that up fairly quickly and yeah. it made sense. So yeah, our baselining, those questions, all those questions we're asking you about baseline, we're looking for your your cadence of speech for things like that so we could tell if you stammered, changed, or stalled because I'm sure I asked you a question somebody had never had. And then when you we're asking you questions and you're eye accessing to your right for memory about the tear in the seat, the tear in the seat specifically to see where you're going for memory because you know where the tear is. And a car guy, I can tell. So I knew you would know tear? where the tear is. Yeah. Who did the tear? That's what we want to know. Who yeah, did I'm it? sure it's him. <laughs> you, you know, first my wife did it, but then I made it worse. And she can give me a lot of stuff over that because I made a big deal about it when she did it. And I'm like, this is why I can't have leather. I should have got the upholstery. And then, of course, <laughs> I did the same thing. And she's like, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, there you go. You know? Crow. For me, for me, your part, your wife paid a big part in this for to help me with my decision because when, you, when she was talking last night about what it looked like and your correction, your correction of no, it was like this. It wasn't like two people said, "Oh yeah, it was like that." If you'd said, "Oh yeah, it was like that," then it didn't mean it wasn't like what she said it was. But it would have made me go something. You know, this is your your story is starting to to intertwine two different stories into one story. But you stuck to your to what you were talking about. That's just an, that's another thing that we would be looking for that we're looking for. So I think everything. I I I think from my perspective, I believe you. I think you saw what you say you saw. Yeah, this so is why I like, wanted to do this. I had a lot of people, you know, this is not a good idea. Even Laura, you know, this is not, but, um, you know, the bottom line is I saw it, it happened. And these other people, you have pilots. Uh, if they, it, I, I, you cannot say, okay, I saw something like that and then go on with the rest of your life as if that doesn't have some kind of significance uh, to it. Uh, if th these things are out there, Someone's got to be looking at them, right? And if nobody's taking it seriously, the only way for more people uh, to to draw the attention of whatever you want to call it, the, the government yeah. or whoever looks into this stuff, the only way to do that is by talking about it. So, well, there's it, there's a guy named Tom Reed that we talked to, and he was on that uh, the Netflix special, the the Berkshires um, UFO. And the main thing that struck us as uh, as well, Greg and I as well, was his his talk about how it was life changing. From that moment on, things were yeah, different right. in this situation. And the same thing with the, the with the woman who was who was on there as well. She said that as well. 
and you you focused on that and you keep going back to that how it's been a life-changing thing from them from again we talked about a religious aspect earlier but talk about religion for a second so even you're bringing that up how that sort of it might fight with that a little bit for you so that was an interesting part as well and i'm i'm saying this for somebody watching going why do you why would you think this and that that's one of the things that for me anyway would trigger that that makes me believe it as well that makes it sound more believable to me you know and guys all, all um, we can ask uh, is what you that you tell us what you remember and that's what you're doing yep yeah yeah, yeah. and it's you know when, when something like that happens you know the first thing everybody asks you is well where's the picture right where's the camera well, you, everyone has a cell phone when you're seeing something like that you're not thinking oh let me get myself you can't believe what you're seeing your brain is struggling to take in the information. You're not you can, jumping you can compare to the that, cell phone. You can compare that to someone starting shooting or some some big active thing happening where your attention, your limbic system goes straight to that, makes you focus on that for your own safety. Right. So that part I totally get. I agree. There's there you see a lot of things about ghost stories and UFOs and Bigfoot. Why didn't they have a camera out? I mean, the situation what you've described sounds like the situation where it would be where you're you would be. Uh, on fire with what's going to happen next. So that was, that's probably why you didn't think about it. You're so focused on you and your family's there too. So that's another thing to add to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. And that, you know, now I think back about it, that is the only thing that did the kids or the, or at least the, the girl, the, the, my, like I said, my son, he, he thought it was great. He thought it was epic. I mean, he ran on told all his friends, oh, I got to see an alien spaceship. And click. We don't know what it was. We don't know. What it, and I did try to explain it for two days. And you do you, it just from a, maybe part of this is my belief system. But I think a lot of people would do this a couple of days later before I, you know, maybe two, three days later, when I finally called MUFON, I tried first to convince myself I didn't really see it. Right. So I'm trying to unsee it. It could have been this. It couldn't have been that. How come nobody else sees it? Why, why would I see it? Right. And uh, I tried to think you know, to, to just forget, it. but you can't, if it's, you just can't, you, you can't unsee it. And then you just want, you know, you want it to happen uh, again. Unfortunately, I think I'll probably go to my grave and not have any idea what was in that, in that craft. That's probably, that, it's much more likely than not. So well, thanks for bringing this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Thanks for doing this with us. Hey, no, no problem. I'm glad you guys were here to, to, to do it. I really thought this was the way to go. Oh, good. Well, thanks. Well, this is good too. Uh, people don't often get to see uh, the actual process. And that's my big question for you, Rich. How did it feel? How did it feel? You know, yeah. mixed feelings. And then yesterday when we were done, I had somebody send me, uh, uh, like we got a lot of comments. We got a couple drops. Uh, it happens. Uh, and I had somebody send me though a comment and one uh, was sent to Laura and together those comments really, it made it worth it. So the first, the first person uh, who I know is like me believer, you know, it re really validated what I thought, which is that people have a very open mind. And then the second comment was somebody who didn't believe and usually takes all of these people who have these sightings. Um, not even if they don't give them the benefit of the doubt, they think they're quacks. And the comment generally, Eric, was, you know what? Because it came from Rich, I'm willing to have an open mind about it. You know, so those two alone uh, made it worth it, even if I wind up losing a couple supporters in the short term. You know, no, it I'm happens. Okay. Also, also, the process right now, because I can tell oh. you just being baseline by the, you know, four behavior panels is not necessarily pleasant. And I you know how it felt <laughs> for you. Because you're under the scope, you know you're under the scope, and there's a whole chat who's obviously reacting, which you're not reading, but it's amusing to watch because everybody's speculating continuously during it. And I'm just yeah, you know what back. though, Eric, it is it is a little uh, you know it, it's not comfortable, but uh, when you have when you know <laughs> when you know you 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 know what you saw and you're telling the truth, it makes it easier. If I was lying, I'd be very much much less comfortable. Right, you should, so, you should come on our, that's why you should come on our show. You should come on our the behavior yeah, panel. show. Oh, yeah. I'd love to. to I love to. I watch you guys all the time with Eric. I love it. I love it. That's oh, good. Thanks. And and I thought, right. you know what? If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this with these guys because, um, 
well, first of all, because I have watched you uh, and I know your backgrounds, there was no better place to do it. So I, you know, I, I know I'm telling the truth and I have people like you say, you know what? The, I believe them, then maybe it'll push the conversation forward a little bit more, or at least give people a chance to have an open mind. If you saw what I saw, you would not go on with your life and say, we just can ignore this. We cannot ignore it. We can't. Um, and now, you know, we have pilots and other people in the military. Uh, they're interacting apparently with, with th similar things. This is not something we can just mock and laugh anymore. We have to, we, we have to bring this into the realm of credible and discuss it. And of course, not everyone is going to have a credible story. I get that, but sure. everyone at yeah. least, uh, you know, if they truly believe they had a sight and they saw something, they should be heard without without fear of being mocked. Cool. Yeah. No. Yep. This is. But I'd love to come on. Absolutely. Okay, okay. we'll get a hold of you. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get out out there. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. Okay, cool. All right. Great. Well, folks, this is a perfect lead in. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Next week, we have these guys coming back. Not Rich, sorry. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody else uh, in the hot seat. And it's going to be really cool because I don't feel like it's done that often. We have Peter Hyatt coming on with Scott and Greg. <laughs> They're known for um, body language, etc. But obviously, they do a lot more. Peter Hyatt is statement analysis and he does a little body language but he is full on statement analysis to the point of not really wanting to watch somebody give statements he literally wants it written down um in avenue um uh, sapir style to parse the the words and i think that everybody will in, enjoy and we can compare and contrast they've come to different conclusions about like uh the mccann's peter hyatt has been very very strongly feeling one way and from some interviews, the behavior panel felt a different way. And obviously, there's room in there for overlapping. But part of what I love is nobody is consistent and they don't always agree. And it's cool to have people on like these guys together, Peter Hyatt, so we can kind of flesh things out and talk about the different techniques. Uh, Alder Vray, who I really want to get on um, again, he's been on the show. And he is a scientist who is very skeptical of it, especially statement analysis. So it, it's really interesting, but I want to expose everybody to all of this because I think that this these tools are incredibly powerful, but the majority of people using them could be causing a lot of damage unless they're highly trained, highly experienced, I mean, everybody in the behavior panel has years and years and years. But like if some quack like me goes out there and tries to do it, you know, I'd be dangerous. And a lot of other people just say, okay, you know, I watched lie to me 10 times. Uh, you're lying. And there has actually been a study done on that. And that would be a, a up Rich's alley where they found that people after watching lie to me and other shows like that, I think the mentalist was another one that their accuracy rate in telling truth dipped to less than 50 percent so mm -hmm. they started out like at 51 52 percent just coming off the street and when they started watching the shows they got worse so i i love this stuff but i i especially appreciate that you know everybody i'm dealing with is pretty humble i feel and honest about where things are so we're I really, really excited hope. about meeting Peter Hyatt, though. Oh, I'm yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. To, I read his book. I can't wait to meet him. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. So everybody, consider subscribing. Yeah, uh, guys, obviously. subscribe. This is a great, this is oh, one yeah. of our favorite things to do. Please subscribe. Eric Eric needs a whole lot more subscribers than he has today. He's one of the best yeah. shows on. Yeah, yeah thank no you. Kidding. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And remember, Greg ran Sears School, so you never know where you can wind <laughs> up if you don't. No. Thank you so much.